Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a top five best and worst luxury purchases. I thought this might be kind of fun to do because especially on YouTube, I see a lot of luxury reveals and unboxings, but you don't always see the flip side of when things don't work out. So I thought it might be kind of interesting to look at what I have and then pick out what I consider to be the best five luxury purchases that I've made as well as the worst five luxury purchases that I've made. For the worst purchases, I don't have all of the items, so I still have three of them, but two of them I did sell, so I'll just be inserting pictures there. I also wanted to say that for my criteria for the worst purchases, I kind of took into account not just whether it didn't work out for me, but also the value and whether I lost money if I did sell the item or if I was going to sell the item. So for example, if I bought a Chanel flap and it didn't work out for me and I wanted to sell it, but I recouped all the money that I spent when I initially buying it, I wouldn't necessarily consider that a bad purchase. Purchase, whereas if I bought something else and then I end up selling it I lost a lot of money that I would consider a bad purchase so I kind of took into account a myriad of factors to hopefully make a more kind of well-rounded decision I guess so I hope that you guys enjoy this video and I'm gonna get stuck right in so I'm gonna start off with my five best luxury purchases first just to start off on a positive note and the first thing that I'm gonna show you comes as no surprise to anyone I'm sure it is my Chanel Jumbo I had to include this even though I'm sure you're all bored of me waffle on about it but I just absolutely love this bag I bought it almost five years ago and so it was two and a half thousand pounds then which was an insane amount of money it's even more expensive now it's three and a half thousand pounds now so a crazy crazy amount of money to spend on a bag but it I can genuinely say it's been one of my best purchases period like of anything that I've ever bought especially when you consider cost per wear because I've used this so much and it still looks in absolutely I mean, amazing condition there's really nothing wrong with it it just held its shape beautifully, there's really minimal wear and tear, and it's also, I just think it looks still very current, very fresh, it's still extremely desirable, and I just love it. I think it goes with everything in my wardrobe, and any time I wear it, I just feel that a little bit more special, and I just, I can't get enough of this bag, and I think, for someone who's quite fickle as well, for me to still love something this much, even five years after I got it, I mean, that's that's proof of a good purchase, right? So if you are considering whether this bag is worth it to save up for, even now, I, I still, knowing how much I love it now, I still wouldn't hesitate to spend three and a half thousand pounds on it. Because even though it is a huge amount of money, I know that I could really just have this one bag and I would just be so happy because it's such a gorgeous bag. So I would really highly recommend it to anyone considering this bag because you will not regret it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So my next pick is actually my watch, and I took it off for the purposes of this video, but I usually wear this every day. I got this about two years ago, I think, and uh, the watch is by Movado, and I actually found out about this brand because I'm a huge fan of Scandal, and Olivia Pope, the main character in Scandal, wears Movado watches, and also Kerry Washington, the actress that plays her, is a brand ambassador as well. So I discovered the brand through Scandal, and I just kind of fell in love. Their designs are very simple, they're Swiss made, so beautiful quality watches, and this is is one of the higher end models in their line. I think this was about 1100 or 1300. Most of their watches run about seven to 800 pounds, I think. So, you know, it's definitely an expensive line, but it's not like in the realms of Rolex or Omega or any of those kind of brands. So I actually love this. It's very simple. It just has a black face with these diamonds around the edges. And then it has this very simple kind of stainless steel bracelet. And I just think this is totally gorgeous. And I was debating whether to go for this, which is which was one of the higher end models in the line, as I said, or to kind of go for something very entry level with Omega or one of those types of brands. And I ended up going for this and I'm just, I'm so glad that I didn't opt for what would have been the worst watch in probably Omega's range versus one of the best watches in Movada's range. So I think that's kind of almost a life lesson for me, not to try and extend myself beyond my means and just kind of go what I can afford but choose the best of what I can afford if that makes sense. So I absolutely love this watch and as I said I've worn it pretty much every single day since I got it and I think it was a terrific buy. So my next pick is actually a complete cheat because I've squeezed two items into one because I couldn't decide and I basically had too many things. But they are my Louis Vuitton Insulite Wallet as well as my Louis Vuitton Neville. Again, this one probably won't come as any surprise to anyone who watches my videos regularly. I love this bag and I think it's literally just the best thing ever pretty much. I absolutely adore it. I've had this 
I've had both of these for about two years, I think, actually. And uh, yeah, they just held up really, really well. Obviously, there is some wear on the Vachetta. It is really patinaed and there is a bit of dirt, but that's my fault. But if you look on the bottom, I mean, it looks pretty much new, I think. It's just such a workhorse. It's amazing, this bag. It's also extremely comfortable. I did include this in my uh, best work totes video. Uh, so if you didn't see that, I will link it below. So I won't go on about this bag, but I think this is such a great buy. And even though the price is more now, I think it's 750 versus about 500 for when I paid for it. I still wouldn't hesitate recommending this bag and I would definitely go out and buy another one if this one broke and I'm actually considering getting another Neverfall soon because I love the style so much. And the wallet is just a similarly great purchase. I absolutely love this wallet. I actually bought this right after I sold a Chanel wallet which actually made it into my top five worst purchases and after that terrible experience with that wallet I wanted something really durable so I opted for this and it was a lot of money to spend on a wallet. I wasn't used to spending that much money on wallets I had only had kind of Kate Spade wallets in around that price range so this was a lot of money but I have not regressed it since even though it has the illustration the wear and tear is still pretty good there's only a tiny amount of wear there and I've used this pretty consistently over the last two years almost every day I recently got two new wallets so I have been swapping those out but apart from that I've used this very very frequently and I think it's just I think it's just wonderful quality. I mean, again, you can't really see the wear and tear on it at all. I'm not currently using it, which is why there are some some empty slots here, but it's just in tremendous condition. And I know I hear a lot of people complain that Louis Vuitton charges so much money for items which aren't even real leather, but I think when the canvas looks this good and also wears this well, I don't really see there's any room for complaints. So I think these two are just definitely worth the money and I would highly recommend them to anyone looking at Louis Vuitton canvas. So my fourth choice is something that I've actually had for 10 years now, I think, which is crazy, especially because it is actually a scarf. And it's this scarf from Missoni. And as you can see, it's very long and it's very thick. I'm not sure what kind of wool it is, but it's very, very warm indeed. It has this beautiful kind of pattern on it, all different types of colors. And even though this isn't particularly trendy now, and it wasn't even particularly trendy then, I love it because, I mean, I wear this every single winter and because it was never particularly in style, I don't really think it's ever particularly out of style either, if that makes any sense. And this definitely isn't something that I would usually go for. I don't usually go for anything that's this bright or patterned, but because I wear very, very plain coats, it's usually black or, or camel colored, I find this just always adds an extra pop of color. And I absolutely love it. It's very functional because it's warm, it's very long, so I kind of wrap it around several times and I absolutely love it it goes really badly with my shirt but yeah I absolutely love this and as I said it comes out every single winter and I forget how much the cost was I think it was a little over 200 euros but if you work it out cost per wear that works out to hardly anything because I've literally worn this to death so I absolutely adore this and you know if you're looking for something a bit off kilter but that's still going to last you and is still kind of a classic then look to Missoni because they do wonderful things and I absolutely love it. So my last choice, my best purchases is actually a skincare one and it's this product from SK2. This is the facial treatment essence and I do actually use two other products so I should really say this is more representative because I'm talking about the whole line. I've never really tried the products on their own before, I've always used them in tandem so I couldn't really speak for how well they do individually but together they are amazing. I use the clearing lotion and I also use the cleanser and this line has completely transformed my skin. I was never really a big believer in spending a lot of money on skincare before. I had tried some very expensive products and some very cheap products and I found that they all worked the same. They didn't really do that much and I couldn't see a difference and I don't even remember what convinced me to try this line because it is so expensive. It was the most I'd ever spent on skincare but I went out on a limb and I went for it and I have not looked back since. I have bought the products pretty consistently since then and as I said they've just completely transformed my skin I would suffer from pretty bad breakouts I never really had severe acne or anything and as a teenager I had very clear skin but then when I hit my 20s I don't know what happened and I would get very very consistent breakouts but now I that just doesn't happen anymore. It's completely cleared my skin up. I hardly ever get blemishes anymore. And it also just makes your skin look more youthful and glowing and it just improves it in every way. So 
I would have to recommend this as one of my top five luxury purchases. It definitely is a significant amount per month, you know, the products don't last that long. They do advise you use it day, uh, sorry, morning and night, which I do do. And so it's definitely a lot more than I was spending on skincare, but for the difference it makes to my life and to my confidence, it is 100% worth it, especially if you kind of compare it to how much I spend on bags or fashion or all those other things. And this is fairly minimal and for the difference it makes in my life, 100% worth it. So if you are thinking about trying this line or if you just want skincare that really, really works, I highly recommend this. It's absolutely amazing and I could not recommend it highly enough. So on to my five worst purchases now and my first one is actually a bag that I mentioned in my work totes video I believe and it's the Prada Saffiano tote. I didn't know the style name of it then and I don't know the name of it now so I will just insert a picture but I bought this about I think 18 months ago I would say and I loved it then, I thought it was gorgeous. Again, it was probably a scandal slash Olivia Pope inspired purchase. She often wears a lot of Prada totes and she looks so chic and businesslike and I wanted to be Olivia Pope. But the style just did not suit me, it didn't suit my life. I don't really like top handles that much. I like being fuss free, hand off free as I mentioned with my Neverfull and this bag just felt ridiculous on me. It looked like I was playing dress up. It just, it didn't suit me at all. I don't know why, because it was a very neutral bag. You know, there was nothing really wrong with it. It wasn't that dissimilar to my Louis Vuitton soft locket, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't reaching for it. I think I used it one time and that was for an interview. And even then I didn't even really like it then. It just, it just didn't work with me and it didn't make me feel good. And so I ended up selling that soon after and I lost a fair bit of money on it. I don't know why Prada bags don't seem to hold their value very well. So that was kind of a lesson for me. I also previously bought another Prada bag which was in this gorgeous blue color it was a kind of like a bucket bag no sorry that's not the right word I know bucket bags the drawstring ones but it was this kind of rectangular tote very very simple but it was incredibly heavy so even though it was made of this beautiful pebbled leather it was so heavy that I would just not use it like anytime I would take it out it would be a burden for me so Ever since those two purchases, I kind of stayed away from Prada bags, even though there are lots of styles which I like and I'm always getting drawn in by the beautiful colors. I always kind of remind myself of those two and I just stay far away because they don't hold their value. I just can't trust myself with Prada anymore. So that is definitely one of my worst purchases. So the second worst purchase is the Chanel wallet that I mentioned earlier. I bought this in lambskin with the Camellia print. It was a French style wallet and it was beautiful. It is still to date probably one of the most beautiful wallets I've ever seen. The most gorgeous shade of blue. The leather was so soft, just stunning and also a complete nightmare to deal with. I will insert a picture somewhere here, but it was just terrible. The lambskin was so unbelievably delicate. It would mark no matter how much I babied it. it because it was a French style wallet, it had a separate coin purse. And when I put coins in and I took them out, I could actually see the imprint of the coin into the leather. That's how soft it was. When I took cards out of the card slots, it would dent the leather and it would split at the sides. It was just terrible. Within a week I started putting it in a dust bag within my bags and so it just took me forever to pay for things because I had to go for a bag within a bag. It was crazy and then I think after about a month I just stopped using it altogether because the wear and tear was just heartbreaking to see. I couldn't believe I spent so much money on something that was so delicate but also you know a wallet needs to be functional. I use my wallet every single day to buy stuff and it was just stressing me out and I, I finally realized that you know luxury shouldn't be a stress thing it shouldn't be adding more stress to my life so I retired it I put it in its box and I ended up selling it about six months later when I finally brought myself to I knew that I would lose quite a bit of money on it for whatever reason Chanel SLGs don't seem to hold their value as much as bags so I ended up selling it I did make a loss but I just took it as a lesson learned don't go for delicate things which don't withstand daily wear and tear because they're just not worth it so if you are considering a Chanel lambskin wallet a word of warning they are incredibly delicate and for me it just wasn't suitable so I did end up getting my Louis Vuitton Insolite wallet and since then I've kind of been hooked on Louis Vuitton SLGs because I think they're so great and durable. So unfortunately there was no doubt that the Chanel wallet was going to have to be included in my top five worst picks. 
So my third choice after going on and on about Louis Vuitton SLGs is actually a Louis Vuitton SLG and it's this key pouch right here. This is in the Vernet leather with the rose lychee shade. This was a limited edition colour and that's the reason why I bought it because I adored the colour. It's super pretty. It's like this peachy pink with this gorgeous shimmer and I just think this is so so lovely and so I knew I had to get something and because I was obsessed with the colour I went for this because you know you can't go wrong with an SLG right? only I don't use this. I used it for a really short amount of time. I think I was storing excess business cards and receipts in there but since then I mean I kind of took it out because honestly I don't need another place to put my business cards. I hold my business cards in enough places and I was just using this for the sake of using it so it was just kind of adding extra weight to any bag I was carrying and as pretty as it is like I just don't get it like what do you use these for if you guys do have these please let me know what you use them for because I would love to get more ideas but so far this has been a pretty redundant purchase and it's kind of a lesson to me that I really have to think through the practicalities of what I'm buying and try and imagine what I'm going to use it for and if I can't then I probably don't need it so as pretty as this is this has to be included in my top five worst buys. So my fourth choice is another Louis Vuitton pick and it's this shawl right here, shawl scarf. And I know a lot of people consider these to be absolute staples. I know these scarves have a big, big fan base. However, I'm just not one of them. It took me years to actually get around to buying this because 330 pounds, that's a lot of money for a scarf. And I just, I couldn't really justify the cost. Have I got some vouchers uh, for Selfridges for Christmas? And so I decided to put the money towards this scarf. And I do like it, I think it's beautiful. I picked the, the right color for me, I think. But I just don't reach for this very much. And I think it's a combination of things. I think the weight isn't particularly good for me when I'm reaching for scarves. It's usually winter or autumn when it's very cold. And this doesn't add a whole lot of warmth. And then in summer, I just don't generally tend to reach for scarves. So I I think the thickness and the warmth is a bit of a funny one but it's also very very delicate and so I actually snagged this within the first week of getting it. It wasn't a huge one but it was enough to kind of put me off. I don't really like to use things which are super delicate and which I know are going to stress me out and so that in combination with the fact that I don't find this very warm means that I very rarely reach for it. When I do I do like the look of it but it's just not something which I get excited about wearing and so I've used this a few times since I got it but for the cost per wear this is really quite expensive and so if I was gonna buy it again I just I would give this one a miss. So my very last choice for my five worst luxury items are these pair of flats. I do have the other one right here uh, from Salvatore Ferragamo. These are the classic ones with a bow detail right here. These are in the nude painting and I think these are so gorgeous and so classic but they are also so so uncomfortable that I just never reach for them and I have heard many people say you have to break them in and I've tried to do that. I have failed to do that and there's also a part of it which is they cost over 300 pounds. I really don't feel like you should have to break them in. I think that shoes that cost that much money should be really comfortable and already broken in. And I know that's not how luxury works, which is ridiculous, but I just don't think these represent good value for money for that reason. So these were definitely going to be included in mine. Cost per wear is extremely high because I don't wear them. And for me, as beautiful as they are, they are just absolutely no use sitting in my closet. So these would definitely be counted as one of my worst buys. So that's it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. You found it fun and useful. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.